Brady can sing, act, dance, and he's a hell of an impressionist. He's one of the nice guys in the industry who typically flies under the radar and is relatively unproblematic. But away from the glitz and glamour, the Let's Make a Deal host has faced some personal struggles that have led him down the path to discovering his true self. Before we jump into today's video, be sure to scoop up something to munch on at rrgsnacks.com, our online concession stand that has an assortment of beef and bacon jerky, blue raspberry licorice, and butter toffee peanuts. Wayne Alfonso Brady was born on June 2, 1972 in Columbus, Georgia to teenage West Indian parents. He told Alzheimer.org that his grandmother raised him from the time he was a baby and he affectionately called her mom. His family later moved to Orlando, and from an early age, he was taught the importance of education. His elders also taught him to talk a certain way and be articulate. So he went from having an accent to talking proper, which bothered a lot of the children in the mostly black, low-income community of Tangelo Park. He told the Chicago Tribune the children there always told him he wasn't black enough. They also accused him of thinking he was too good to hang out with them. Sadly, he felt ostracized among his own people. In an eight-minute spoken word track called Angriest Black Man in America, he talks about a lighter-skinned black girl who once told him, "Use a black, ugly mother. Those words transformed his life and made him ashamed of his melanin. He said, You pair black and ugly together in that manner made me feel like my type of black life didn't matter. He started avoiding the sun and didn't want to play outside out of fear that he would get darker. He hated his coarse hair and would drench it in baby oil in an attempt to make it soft and shiny. He also struggled with a stutter, which added to his insecurities. He told the Orlando Sentinel he stopped talking so people wouldn't make fun of his speech disorder. And then he was bused to school four miles away, where being a poor black kid in an upper-class institution made him an immediate target. He got better at telling yo mama jokes in order to avoid confrontation and to win any verbal battles. He learned early on how to change himself to fit in two different groups. He defined it as being a chameleon. He also would retreat to his imagination to escape everything that was going on in his young life. Thankfully, he had the support of his grandmother, who kept his spirit lifted during difficult times. In an interview, he said, Whenever I got a little discouraged, she was able to slap me on the back of my head. But his relationship with his father was full of contention. He told Playbill.com his dad was an army drill sergeant for most of his life. So not only was his dad strict, but he didn't approve of Wayne becoming a performer. Nothing and no one could keep Wayne away from his passion, though. After a friend invited him to take a one-line role in a play, Wayne noticed that as soon as he took the stage, his stutter vanished. Acting gave him life. It made him more focused, and he had something to be proud of. He told Jet Magazine he was finally able to walk with his head held high. He joined a local improv troupe, and at the age of 16, he began perfecting his talents as a character, singer, and dancer at Walt Disney World. After graduating from high school, he and his father had a huge falling out over the direction he wanted to take his life. In the end, Wayne decided to follow his heart, and his dad eventually accepted his career path. He married Diana Lasso in 1993. Their marriage ended in divorce in 1995, and his father passed away that same year. In 1996, he moved to Los Angeles to pursue his passion, and the doors started opening immediately. It was just unfortunate that his father had already transitioned and wasn't there to see all the blessings Wayne was receiving. In 1998, just two years after moving to Los Angeles, he landed a role on Whose Line Is It Anyway? and he instantly became a household name. In April 1999, he married dancer Mandy Takeda, and their daughter was born in 2003. Their marriage ended in divorce in 2007. He went on to host The Wayne Brady Show and Let's Make a Deal, a show he used to watch with his grandma when he was young. At the end of every episode, he gives her a shout out by saying, I love you, mom. He was on top of the world and fulfilling all of his dreams. His grandmother still lived in Tangelo Park, and Wayne would visit her and often run into his old classmates, including the ones who treated him horribly. He attended his 10-year high school reunion and told Orlando Magazine that his 15-year-old self was so satisfied to show up in the flesh and show his former classmates everything he had accomplished. 
but on the inside, he was slowly unraveling. Despite being far away from the hurtful comments that damaged him during his childhood, Wayne discovered that adults were just as judgmental, especially as it pertained to black Americans who didn't follow the status quo. During an episode of Chappelle's show, the late Paul Mooney joked that, White people love Wayne Brady because he makes Brian Gumbel look like Malcolm X. Wayne told Shadow and Act website that when the episode originally aired, he was offended. I didn't think, I didn't think the joke was funny. So you have, with one joke, you have dismissed two black people and their accomplishments because you're saying they don't fit into our tribe or our community because we're like this, they're like that. As an entertainer, he knows that cracking jokes about people is the name of the game. However, Paul's dig brought back the unresolved issues from Wayne's childhood, when other children would tease him for not being black enough. Wayne said it bothered him that black people always judged each other. And instead of other black entertainers giving him props for opening doors in other spaces, they chose to look down on him and accused him of only being popular because he appealed to white people. He even reached out to Paul privately and told him he didn't find the joke funny. In the end, the negative feelings he harbored turned into a positive situation when Dave invited Wayne on the show. They created the brilliant piece of comedy that people still talk about today. Sorry, Daddy. What do you mean, sorry, what do you mean, sorry, Daddy? What the hell did you do? Oh, my Is God. Is Wayne Brady going to have to choke a bitch? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. What did I just watch? Bro, oh my gosh, my boy Wayne Brady out here doing drive-bys. My boy pulling up, collecting money <laughs> from his employees. Like, bro, I am done, man. But then, when Bill Maher referred to President Barack Obama's perceived lack of recognizable black cultural characteristics by describing Obama as America's Wayne Brady, Wayne clapped back. I thought when we elected a black president, we were going to get a black president. I, I want him in a meeting with the BP CEOs, you know, where he lifts up his shirt so they can see the gun in his pants. That's... <laughs> During an interview, Wayne went for the jugular by attacking Bill's alleged love for black prostitutes. Just, just because you've been with a black wo woman or two, and I've seen some of them, it's questionable if they were women, now you live the black experience? Oh, now you're down? No. He went on to say he took offense to Bill's denigration of his black identity. The black dude in his mind is the stereotypical, you know, yeah, what? Yeah, you know, that, that dude, right. that guy exists, but that's not the range of the black experience. So then when I meet you, when I talk to you again, I'll give you that black dude and I will beat your ass in public. <laughs> well, damn. In his 30s, he was secretly battling depression. He told Entertainment Tonight that people thought he was always so happy, but he wasn't. And the bad feelings followed him for years. He said, you're like, I am just going to sit right here and I want to wallow in this. As much as it hurts, I am going to sit right here because this is what I deserve. He hit rock bottom on his 42nd birthday. He told Entertainment Tonight he was alone in his bedroom and had a complete breakdown. Two months later, fellow comedian Robin Williams took his own life at the age of 63, and Wayne was deeply impacted by his passing. He knew exactly how it felt to make other people laugh all while holding on to pain, loneliness, and sadness. His ex-wife, Mandy, encouraged him to seek professional help. She told him, Wayne, I love you, and our daughter loves you, and our family loves you. And this is the path you go down when you don't want to live, and I cannot stand by and watch you ignore this. Like many people in the black community, Wayne grew up thinking therapy was a bad word or something that was for white people. So it took him a long time to realize that asking for help wasn't a weakness. In fact, it took a lot of strength and he eventually accepted the professional help with open arms. Along with therapy, he was also put on medication. He told Parents.com he attends men's support groups and believes in self-care and healthy coping mechanisms to aid in his daily growth habits. Every morning, as soon as he opens his eyes, he sets his intentions for the day, and then he makes his bed. He said, because once I make my bed, no matter what I feel like, I can't go back in my bed because my bed is made. So that forces me to go forth and do whatever I got to do. 
He also became more intentional about the people he surrounds himself with. He has learned to guard who he gives his energy to and who he takes it from. In September 2021, his ex-wife welcomed a son via adoption with her new boyfriend. Wayne stated in an Instagram video that not only was he the child's godfather, but he was going to help co-parent as well. This is Sunny Isamu Takeda Fordham. This is my god baby, but uh, he's going to call me Dunkle, uh, Daddy Uncle, because I plan on being around and, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, so, yeah, no song, nothing funny, no clap back in anybody, just sharing, holding a beautiful baby. In March 2022, his grandmother passed away after a long battle with Alzheimer's disease. The woman who raised him, loved him, and supported him and his dreams was gone from this physical world, and Wayne was overcome with grief. He also decided it was time to address the one aspect of his life that he had suppressed and refused to acknowledge for so long. He told People magazine in August 2023 that he had been attracted to men at various times, but he never acted on it because he was afraid and it went against the way he was raised. For all of his life, people made fun of him for the way he acted and the way he talked, so there was no way he was going to come out about his sexuality to give people another thing to tease him about. But once he finally opened the door and learned more about himself, he started opening up to things in his life that he was ignoring. He didn't want to define himself as bisexual since he hadn't acted on any of his urges. So he settled on pansexual. He said, to me, pan means being able to be attracted to anyone who identifies as gay, straight, bi, transsexual, or non-binary being able to be attracted across the board. And I think at least for me right now, that is the proper place. He opened up to his daughter, his ex-wife, and her boyfriend, and they were very accepting. We expect Wayne will open up more about his journey in the reality show Their Blended Family is filming. The show will premiere on Hulu in 2024. He's aware that he could have kept this information to himself, especially since he's an introvert and stays out of the public eye for the most part. However, he told People magazine that he didn't want to give himself a license to still live in the shadows and be secretive. He's still in therapy and he realizes he's a work in progress. He told People Magazine, I've got some work to do still. Then Wayne as a single open-minded pansexual can make a decision and be free and open to other people. 